Let's get Google Analytics installed on your website using Google Tag Manager, timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources we'll be referencing throughout this guide, and of course, resources to help you get started with all of the other tracking codes and pixels that you need via Tag Manager. Now, if you already have a Google Analytics account, you can go ahead and log in or just search Google Analytics. You'll get to a page that looks something like this. And then of course we can click on start for free. And because I'm already logged in, it automatically logs me into uh, Google Analytics here. We can come down to click on admin. And this is where you can create a new account. You can see the accounts you already have access to. And of course the properties that you already have access to. I'm not going to create a new account, but I will create some new properties so you can see the entire process. So let's go ahead and click on create property here. And of course we need to give our property a name. So I'll come over to our Tag Manager playbook here just to save us some time. I'll grab a copy of what I want to call this property. So this is gonna be Universal Analytics. And link in the description to grab a copy of our Tag Manager playbook to help you stay organized with all of your tags and triggers. Of course, you can always make your own documentation. Now for this first one, we're going to click on Advanced Options and we're going to click Create a Universal Analytics Property. Now this might be a little confusing because Universal Analytics is the old version of Analytics. It's, it's pretty much old news. But the new version of Analytics doesn't give you all the data yet. It's actually really annoying. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab our URL here. So this is going to be the URL for this particular site. And then we can actually create a Google Analytics for and a universal property at the same time once we click this. So that's the advantage of clicking advanced options here. And then of course, I need to make sure that I don't include the HTTPS because it has it for us already. And we'll go ahead and click on next. It'll ask us a couple of questions here. It's not really all that important to what you click here and we'll go ahead and click on create. And just like that, we should have created our two different properties. So it's for the same website, but one's going to be universal and the other is going to be Google Analytics 4. Now to save you some time, the only thing you need from this interface is the measurement ID. You can go ahead and leave all of these other things alone. So we'll go ahead and copy our measure ID. I'll go ahead and come over to my Tag Manager playbook and I will just drop it in there so I can save it for the future. And then I'll go ahead and exit out. So definitely save all these codes to some central document so you don't have to continually go back and forth to find what you need. And so I'm going to come out here. And so you'll see up here, we have our GA4 version and then we have our normal UA version. And so I'm just going to quickly under property settings, rename this to Google Analytics 4. and click on save so I know the difference. And we just use a four letter code for our different websites. So it's easy for us to know what the website is without typing it out all the time. So that's what that F-E-A-A -A means. So we have our universal version and then we have our Google Analytics 4 version. So if you ever need to come back to this interface and get the measurement ID, just click on data streams and you'll see we can click on the URL and we're back in the same place. So you can always come back, get your measurement ID, your stream ID, everything else that you need. For the most part, once you grab this, because you're using Tag Manager, you won't have to come back. So I'll go ahead and exit out of that and I'll click the button over here to come back to our property listing. And now we need to click on our universal version and grab our universal analytics code or UA code. So we'll click on property settings here and this is going to be our UA code, our tracking ID. And I'll go ahead and save that here so that I can just find them for easy reference later. So we have a UA code and then we have a measurement ID. So you do need both because we have two separate properties. Now, the good news is Google Analytics is going to track data for you in both properties the same. It's just that as you start getting more advanced, you'll be very happy that you still have Universal Analytics collecting data for you. There's no penalty to having both. So with that, we're done creating our two tags. We're done inside of Google Analytics, so we can jump over to Google Tag Manager. Now, of course, I'm already inside of the container and account that I want. Of course, if we go back out, we can always select which container or account that we want to be using. I'll jump back in here. You can always just hit this arrow to go back. And now let's go ahead and create a tag. So we'll click on new tag here. And of course, we'll need to give our tag a name Tell Google Tag Manager the configuration and of course the triggering. 
So of course, to save time, I'll just go ahead and copy our Google Analytics 4 here. So I'll go ahead and copy that in, and I will cut out the measurement ID. So there I have my name, and I like to name it the same thing the analytics property is, so it's really easy to know uh, what is what. So we'll go ahead and click on tag configuration, and you'll see we have universal, we have GA4, and then we have GA events. GA events we'll leave for another day when we start getting fancy. So we'll click on GA4 first because that's what we're setting up. So this is Google Analytics 4, and we just paste in our measurement ID. Go ahead and leave server alone for now. This is something fun you can play with in the future if you really want to get advanced. And then all of these other ones, you can go ahead and leave alone as well. So just keep it basic so we don't mess anything up. We'll go ahead and click on triggering here. And triggering is telling us when do we want this to fire. Essentially, when do we want to have Google Tag Manager send data to Google Analytics? And because Analytics is tracking everything, unlike conversion tracking, we'll go ahead and click on All Pages. So we've gone ahead, we've given it a name that's easy for us to remember, and then we've pasted in our measurement ID, selecting Google Analytics 4, and we've told it to fire on All Pages. So we'll go ahead and click on Save here, and once you do, you'll see that there will be a your email, which is why this is all blurred out, and then it will show that there is a new workspace change. And so if you're ever pulling your hair out going, why isn't something working? It might be because it's not live. So what we just did is in draft mode, right? So this is going to list out all of the things that are in draft that haven't been posted live to the site. So we're going to create one more tag. So we'll go and click on new tag here. I'll come over to our playbook, copy our name, and then the UA code. I'll go ahead and paste that in. And of course, I don't need that, just to save us some time. And then we'll go ahead and click on Tag Configuration. Now, last time we did Google Analytics 4. This time, we're going to do Universal Analytics. So we'll click Universal Analytics, Page View. And if you've seen older tutorials, they didn't used to do it this way. But just go ahead and click on Enable Overriding Settings for this tag, and then paste in your measurement ID. I know there's going to be some you know, moderate to advanced users who are like, you shouldn't do it that way. You should add this tag and trigger. But the first time you're doing this, just get it on your site. You can always come back and add complexity later. So that's I like done is better than perfect. Just do it the simple way. You can always add complexity later once you start getting into custom events and into your data layer. So we'll go ahead and click on triggering here and we'll select all pages. So we have our universal analytics. It's going to fire on all pages. We'll go ahead and click on save. Now in our preview here, you'll see we actually have two listings. And so we have our two Google, <laughs> two Google analytics tags. Let's just publish the container. I'm talking over myself. So we have our two tags all set, ready to go. So we'll come over here and click on Submit to make the changes live. So we'll click on Submit. It's going to ask us to tell us what on earth we just did. And I'll go ahead and paste in some basic information so that when we come back in five or 10 years, we know what on earth was done. And then we can go ahead and click on Publish. So I'm not gonna sing, but you can if you want. It'll give us a quick summary of the tags that were published here. And then of course, we can go over to our website and see the actual changes. So we'll come back to our workspace. You'll see there are no longer any workspace changes. And this green will update with whoever made the change and how, many, how long ago the change was made. And so to see our actual changes, unfortunately, you can't use Tag Assistant, the plugin for everything anymore. They're really forcing us to use the preview mode. So we'll go ahead and click on preview mode here. And once we do, it'll start loading up. You'll go ahead and drop in your website URL or the page that you want to test. We'll go ahead and click on connect here. Should work on connecting. And then it will open up in a new tab or window. You'll see debug information for this page is viewable in the Tag Assistant window. So we'll come back over to where we're connected. We'll click continue. And you can see that our two codes have in fact fired. So the Analytics 4 tag is fired and the Universal Analytics tag is fired. Now, if I were to go over to our website here and refresh the page, because Google is phasing out the assistant, which is kind of sad, you'll see that you won't actually see your measurement ID. So Google Analytics 4 doesn't always show up in this anymore. 
So that's why you have to start using the preview mode to make sure things are installed. Although I still recommend just use the plugin to make sure that Tag Manager is actually on your site, right? So I still like using the plugin when you're first installing Tag Manager, just make sure it's there. And then after that, start using this preview mode to see how your tags are firing. And of course you can get a lot more complex with seeing how your conversion tags fire and events top fire in the future. So all you have to do to end it is go ahead and just click the X button, stop debugging, and of course, you'll be able to see a short history of things that um, you've been testing in the past. So I'll go ahead and exit out of this and come back to our dashboard. Now, that's all there is to it, to getting started with Google Analytics and of course, Google Tag Manager. Make sure you check out the link in the description to grab a copy of our Tag Manager playbook to save all of your codes, stay organized, set up your tags, and triggers ahead of time so you know how your tracking is going to be organized and a link to a full-blown video that goes through this and more for all of your Google Ads tracking and Facebook ad tracking needs. So thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe for more marketing guides just like this one, and until the next, keep building the business you love.